and we're gonna talk about how do we fly the discus. It's so, so critical. It's something you need to learn to do, and it makes a massive difference on your throwing performance super fast. So we're gonna go through a couple of simple tips. We're gonna show you how to make sure that you're carrying the discus right, especially in the fingers, so that you can generate more velocity, more rotations per second, and the faster that happens, or the more that happens, the more you can get benefit from higher rim weight discs, and you're going to be able to spin the discus, which is gonna keep it in the air, and you're gonna throw farther. And if you can't fly that discus right, it's costing you distance. So at any rate, let's check it out. We're gonna go through it. All right, so for today's YouTube video, what we're gonna do is kind of get a little more up close and personal, and I'm gonna show you some different things on how we are going to be holding that discus. So now, one of the things that we do is when we hold that, and you're gonna notice when I'm gonna show you this, notice where the fingertips are. So the tendency is to basically get the fingertips too gripped over. So you're gonna see a couple of things. And again, a lot of people talk about how do you grip the discus and whatnot, and, and I think they're all pretty much accurate, but the one thing that we're gonna talk about is really where the discus placement goes. It doesn't go gripped over and this is one of the mistakes I see so we'll teach people to go two fingers together and then what they'll do is they'll get the pinkies kind of here so what that does is that tends to create this kind of pulling effect instead of a clean finish where it's going to come off of the release finger the index finger is the one we want we don't want that finger so here's what we're gonna focus on. We've gotta get that nice spin. And so what we're gonna do is again, we gotta be in the fingertips, not in the knuckle joints. And we certainly don't want the pinkies over. This is what I tend to see a lot of throwers doing. So again, one of the things we're gonna do is we wanna make sure we're doing this. So as we do this, we wanna make sure that we're gonna be learning how to tilt the thumb. And we're gonna notice how that we get the, the edge of the fingers here up, up on the disc here. This is where we're seeing more and more kids do this. They're getting that finger they're getting into the, the joint. And so when you get the fingers kind of here, you might have a good finger position, but you're gonna be, when they come to release, you're gonna be more prone to getting, having the discus come off of those fingers as well. It kind of comes off of here and it's, this is too much. And so then you get that big wobble. If the discus wobbles, it's not spinning like super efficiently. And so that means you can't fly, right? You see discus is doing this, the fluttering throw. Jason Harrell, when he started with me coming out of college, he had some definite aerodynamic issues with his disc. And that was a very early on focus for us was to get his training dialed in for that. So one of the things we wanna make sure we're doing, again, as we look at and we're, we're discussing where we're holding the ring, we wanna see this. We really want those two fingers together because this teaches you and forces you to get this finger to come off the index finger. When you're like this, it can be prone to be this. But here's the trick. You gotta make sure that you don't have the thumb here. The thumb has to be here. So when you're looking at a thrower and they have the hand, they have to have the hand here and the fingers together. And that pretty much ensures that it's gonna be coming off of the tip of the discus this way. Now, you'll notice when we get too much here or we have the fingers spread apart and we're in the knuckles, that's when we get that inconsistency. And one of the things that you're gonna be doing is you're not allowing that discus to sit it optimally with centripetal force when you're winding. So when we're here and we're winding the discus and we're having that discus come out and around, the discus is pushing against the fingertips and that's why when we have this hand turned like this, and it's, the discus is pushing against this, it's gonna be more prone to be coming off of this finger and not so much with the pinky. What we're gonna discuss are two big mistakes often made by beginning discus throwers that are simple, easy to avoid, and that you can change quickly. The common mistake, one of the things that I see uh, quite a bit are too much motion is the first thing, and the second thing is getting too deep in the discus. In the shot, I think it's better. You can get a little lower. So one of the things that we find that young discus throwers tend to do is they tend to get too squatty. And so what that means is they're trying to come around and they're trying to come around super deep. And remember, one of the key things that we wanna see with discus throwers, discus throwers will have some flex in the leg. And so when you see them wind and they hit their pillar one and they're coming to pillar two, they're tall. Because they're taller, they can drop in on pillar three. You see the, the drop in and apply speed. Now, if you're already low, it, you can't really feel that little slight up-down action that you get in the rotational throws. And if you do that, that 
that's going to affect the orbit high point of the implement. It's gonna have an impact on your ability to create speed because you're just kind of rotating around and stepping. So a real simple fix for a lot of you young throwers is to stop sitting, and if I'm throwing in this direction, is to stop sitting like this and then winding and then, dr and then turning around super low. Now there's some could argue that being in that low position is gonna really help how to maintain balance and different things, but it's also not going to be really helping you, the athlete, to understand the motion of that pillar two and that pillar three motion to move out around. If you haven't looked at it, check out our Holy Grail video where we talk about how to get around the left. And when you are too deep in the position here, it's, it's harder for most throwers to actually move around the entry side axis. So that's gonna be your first tip, and the simple way to avoid that is to get out of this deep, deep drop and bring the athlete up so that you can see the hips dropping, you'll see the knees in front, and so we're gonna be able to see that longer, wider action. So again, it looks like this, when we're here, we're gonna see this and we're gonna be able to see that longer, wider kind of sweeping motion because we can move from pillar two to three and drop in. But, and when you see the athlete, they're coming here and they're too far around, it makes that rotational path much more challenging. They're gonna to tend to be coming around and they're gonna get the back in. And that's gonna bring us to the second drill. One of the things that we wanna see is when we're talking about one of the common mistakes is what once we get here, then we get too rotational. And to watch the knee roll. Now, we posted up a video quite some time ago about sweep and the path of the, of the sweep leg in the throw of either the rotational throw, the discus or the shot. So one of the things we wanna do is if we're staying down lower, it's also easier, or when you squat too low, it's really common to get this type of motion, so the knees loop around and the foot is facing down. This is a really big killer because what it does is it makes the athlete too rotational and then they tend to back in. That's gonna make the foot kind of drop down into the throw. So how do we increase that wide sweep? Here's how we're gonna do it. So once we, we create everything a little taller, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna be thinking about leading with the more of the inside of the knee. Now, some people say lead with the inside of the thigh. I tend not to coach that motion because I think that tends to lead to this type of a sweep motion. My tip is to lead with the knee and get your toe up. So if we look at a lot of throwers, you're gonna see that that foot, once they come out, that big wide sweep, you're gonna see more of this and then you're gonna see that toe kind of come in slightly up as they come around into the middle. And one of the other mistakes that occurs when beginning throwers are dropping too low is the narrow sweep. Discus throwers specifically, when we're a little taller and we're staying wider, okay, so when the knees are apart and we stay tall and we shift from pillar one to two, when we're taller and we're moving our center and mass over and in, in prepping to drop into our pillar three, what we're going to be seeing is that if we're already low, it's very difficult when we're low to get a wide sweep, right? So you can see that if I'm in this position and I stay real low, to really get a wide sweep is gonna feel very unnatural and extremely difficult to do. That's why you don't see it done with any elite level thrower. There are one or two guys that were a touch lower. The vast majority of elite world-class throwers for the last several decades are all start with a slightly taller position and come around. So one of the things we wanna, again, suggest for our young throwers is one in the previous where we talked about stop squatting so low, because number two, now we're gonna start, we're assuming we fix that, and what we're gonna be talking about is that when we're coming around and we're staying taller, we wanna think a couple of paths. Some people talk about leading with the inside of the thigh. Some people try to have people reach out here, that's not the sweep leg action. If you look at the best throwers in the world, let's look at Malachowski, let's look at Harding, let's look at Dockers, let's look at Guzdias. Even Guzdias who has a narrower sweep, you're gonna see that's different. They don't have an extending reaching sweep leg. Now, one of the other simple fixes for helping that knee roll over and creating a wider sweep is to be conscious of keeping the shoulders more level and that by default starts to help counterbalance this. When the shoulders are tilting, you know, you're gonna see more of this type of stuff. Keep your shoulders level, think inside of the knee and toe up, and that's gonna help lead into that longer, wider sweeping motion. So hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, throw any comments below, and I will see you in the next video.
Be sure to check out our next videos. Be sure to subscribe. Visit our website for free videos. Click the links below. We have links to our free mini course. Check out our websites for camps and different detailed information. Throw farther faster by understanding the science with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. Thanks so much for watching.